Robert Dix. Amen. Give him a hand clap. Yeah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Somebody ought to give God praise today for waking you up this morning. Somebody ought to give God praise today because he put you in your right mind. Somebody ought to give God praise today because it's cold outside, there's a lot of snow outside, but you can see the snow and you can feel the cold, and that's only because of the goodness, the mercy, and the grace of God. And so I want to thank you this morning, those of you who have gathered in the sanctuary, and those of you who have gathered in the virtual sanctuary, I want you to click like and share. Um, call up your friends. Let them know that United and Pastor Dix is on live right now. Amen. And we don't come in no form or fashion but to lift up the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So we thank you today for choosing to make United your place of worship. Father, we thank you and we praise you. For your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. Yes. We thank you for keeping us from the last time to this time. And now, right now, in the name of Jesus, have your way in this service. Bless those who came looking for a blessing. Heal those who came looking for a healing. Keep those who have been looking to be kept. And Father, we'll continue to give your name all the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And thank God. Amen. We're here today and uh, we're so thankful and grateful uh, to have our very capable minister of music, Brother Dion Davis, Dr. Praise. And we're going to put you in his hands and allow um, him to minister us, minister to us through music and song. Let the peace of the Lord 
beautiful first lady who did a very marvelous job and brought a very powerful uh, message this morning, a lesson. Today on forgiveness, we thank God for her. We give God praise for our minister of music, a man who uh, allowed the Lord to use him. And to all of you, my father's children, we say good morning. Good morning. There is a word from the Lord found in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter number 13. Genesis chapter number 13. And um, I want for your hearing to just zero in on about four verses. Um, but uh, when you have time, you need to read the entire um, chapter of Genesis 13. As a matter of fact, read Genesis 12 and 13. Amen. 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 Genesis 13 and 14, we find these words. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that Lot was separated from him, somebody say separated, separated. lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward and southward eastward and westward for all the land which thou seest to thee will I give it and to thy seed forever and I will make thee thy seed as the dust of the earth so that if a man can number the dust of the earth then shall thy seed also be numbered arise walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Then Abram removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of God. May the Lord have a blessing. To the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his word. And um, I like to preach from the subject, Godly Partnerships, Part 2. All right. But I want to put a tag with this one. Finding the blessing in goodbye. Yeah. Right. Finding the blessing mm. in goodbye. All right, I hear you. My brothers and my sisters, in order for us to grow in the grace of God, in order for us to be all that God would have us to be, how many of you know that God has to break up some relationships that we've grown accustomed to? Well, in order for us to be all that God is calling us to be, God has to dissolve partnerships that we've been in for long periods of time. Well, As a matter of fact, the closer you get to God, the harder it ought to be for you to continue in some of the relationships that you're in. Right. I reminded you all last week of Howard Thurman, the great theologian who is quoted as saying that there are two questions you need to answer as you navigate your way through this life. First of all, you need to ask yourself, where am I going? Mm. Uh, where, what is my destiny? What is it that the Lord would have me to do? And then the second question is, who's going with me? Mm. And I've stopped by this morning to remind you that yes, there are those relationships that God has called us into. On last week, we discussed the type of people we believe God wants us to be connected to. We base that off of Jesus' calling to the disciples, Peter, Andrew, James, and John. And how many of you remember that the Lord ordains partnerships that are connected. In other words, it's good to be in a relationship where you're connected to other people who are connected because I do believe the Lord operates in network. Amen. The Lord ordains us to be in relationships with folk who want to see you win. Yeah. You don't need to be surrounded by haters. You don't need to be surrounded by folk trying to block you all the time or intimidated by you or insecure by you. You need somebody in your life that is uh, have enough sense to say, I want you be what the Lord is calling you to be. I want to see you. I want to see your business flourish. I want to see your ministry prosper. I want to see you win. And then you need to know that um, you need to be in, in partnership with folk who are humble, folk who don't look back and say, 
say, look what I've done, or look what you've done, but you need somebody who will look and say, look what the Lord has done. It's only by his goodness and his mercy and his grace. Yes. And I submit to you right now, if you really don't know who a person is, if you really want to know what a person is all about, if you really want to know who they are, don't ask them, just look at the type of people that they hang around. If you want to know how a person is and how they live, just look at the people that they run with and hang with. And I hear y'all saying, uh, you can't judge a book by its cover, but I'm reminded by what my 10th grade history teacher, Coach Virgil Walker, he told us, he said, association breeds assimilation. Is there anybody listening up who knows that birds of a feather do flock together, and if you lay down with dogs, you'll get up with fleas. And so I wish I had a church who knows that you're who you're connected to will either hinder you or it will help you. Who you're connected to will either bless you or it will curse you. Who you're connected to will encourage you or discourage you. Who you're connected to is important. Amen. And I just believe that because God knows that we have the tendency to connect with folk who mean us no good, uh, every now and then the Lord has to come through and divinely bust up some stuff. Uh, yeah. You can't have any and everybody hanging around you. Uh, you can't have any and everybody hanging on you. Uh, you can't be attached to everybody. Uh, sometimes the Lord has to remove folk uh, so you can blossom uh, and be who he's calling you to be. And can I be real for a moment? Let us just be real. Uh, uh, all, uh, all of us know that we have held on to people who we do darn well were no good for us. We hold on to relationships and we know they don't mean us no good. But because God loves us and because God wants to bless us, and when we refuse to do what we know is right, God has a way of engineering uh, endings, uh, and he does it in several ways. Uh, sometimes the Lord will use a controversy. Sometimes he'll use conflict. Sometimes he'll use dispute. Uh, and that all those things will push you to the point to where you say, I just need to get up out of here. I just need to go. Amen. Which brings us to the text. Mm. Here in the text is the story of Abram and Lot. Now the Lord had already spoke to Abram and told him, leave your father's house. And when he told Abram to leave your father's house, he didn't tell him where he was going. Abram had to be obedient. And as he walked in obedience, the Lord will reveal his destiny to him. And so Abram was obedient and he left his father's house. And while they were journeying, um, they came to a land and the favor of God was on Abram. The Bible says his flock had multiplied, and Abram was so blessed that Lot was blessed just by being with him. In other words, uh, uh, when you're connected to somebody, uh, if the blessing is on them, all you have to do is stay close, uh, and the blessing will flow to you. And so the Bible says they reached the outskirts of Canaan, and both herds had grown so big that a problem arrived. Both of their herds had grown so big and they were so blessed until they couldn't occupy the same space. This is Bible. The Bible says that their servants began to fight with one another and Abram's folk was against Lot's folk. And I don't know about you, but that's a controversy. So, so much of God's blessing and favor was on Abram's life until it caused strife with Lot and it leads to their parting of the ways. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. God called and God favored Abram. And the call and the favor on Abram's life, it caused strife with Lot. And ultimately, it led to their separation. Is there anybody listening this morning who knows that when the call of God and the favor of God is on your life, there are some folk who you're close to and you're going to have to walk away. Oftentimes we tend to think that God's call and God's uh, favor on your life will draw people to you, but the reality is a lot of times when God's favor and God's call is on your life, 
it was God's folk to leave you. But baby, let me tell you, I've been around long enough to know that because I'm called by God, and because I'm favored by God, there are some folk that I can't walk with. There are some folk I can't roll with. There are some folk I cannot uh, associate with. Love them? Yes. Will I miss them? Yes. Do I wish them well? Yes. But the call of and the favor on my life is taking me to a higher height and a deeper depth. And I can't be hindered by haters. I can't be blocked by blockers. I can't be held up by other people's hang up. I love you, but I've got to walk away. Wow. And can I pull over to the side of the road long enough to let you know that this is not only true in business. This is not only true in ministry. But if I read the text right, it also applies to family. Now this is not this. This is Bible. Because the Bible says Lot was Abram's nephew. Now this got me, Dr. Praise. I couldn't understand why the Lord would ordain a disillusion between Abram and Lot. I couldn't understand why when the Lord caused division, or, or better yet, not division, but separation within the family. I mean, there's nothing in the scripture that would suggest that Lot had the wrong spirit. There was nothing in the scripture that said Lot was even disrespectful. And so why would the Lord call them in to separation? And the Lord showed me this. Uh, in chapter 12, when the Lord originally called Abram to leave his father's house, uh, verse 4 of 12 says, and Abram, now watch this, now y'all gotta catch this, the Lord called Abram to leave his father's house. And verse 12 says, and Abram departed as the Lord had spoken, and Lot went with him. Mm -hmm. wow. Watch this, I'm gonna say it again. Mm -hmm. The Lord called Abram, mm -hmm. told Abram, leave your father's house, and I'll make you the father of many nations. Y'all know the Bible. But the Bible says in verse 12, and Abram departed as the Lord had spoken, and Lot went with him. And so can it be that they had to separate because Lot was never assigned to Abram's life? Abram allowed Lot to tag along. And I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but somebody is in your life right now. They're in your circle right now. They're not ordained by God to be there. They're not called by God to be there. They were not assigned by God to be there. And you have allowed them to be there because they offer companionship, but not partnership. And I suggest to you this morning that the Lord called them to separate. Uh, he called Lot and Abram to separate because Abram didn't need companionship. He needed partnership. And there's somebody watching right now. You're in a toxic relationship because you're afraid to be alone. And so you connect with somebody who will give you companionship. Somebody that's watching you. Somebody that's observing you. Somebody that's absorbing you. They're in a companionship, but not a partnership. And you can't reach your godly destiny. And I listen, I know I said I wasn't talking about marriage last week, but for some couples, your marriage is not growing. Your marriage is not strong. The only thing you're getting is more debt. The only thing you're getting out of the relationship is you're getting more mad, more sick and tired of looking at him and listening to her. I wish I had a church this morning who knows it's time to come out of companionship and get into partnership. Abraham didn't need Lot for companionship. He had his wife. That was his companion. But y'all not feeling me. And one of the best things you can ever do, wow. one of the best things you can ever learn to, is to appreciate being alone. Yes. Help me, Holy Ghost. Yes. The best thing you can do for yourself is learn how to be alone. Yes. I was talking to my son yesterday. I told y'all last week we were talking about what college he wants to go to and, and, and which friends are going with him. But then just last night, Trey came in and he said, Daddy, I may go to a school without my buddies. I may go to school by myself. And I told him, if that's your decision, you got my full support. And I don't know who this is for, but somebody is watching 
watching and you need to stop being so desperate to have companionship that you allow everybody to hang on to you. You got to learn how to be by yourself. Oh yes, you can't you need to know that you don't have to have somebody always hanging along with you. You can learn how to be by yourself. You can go to the movie by yourself. You can go to a concert by yourself. You can go to dinner by yourself. One of my favorite songs by the Jackson Fives, it says you got to enjoy yourself. And just in case you're too saved and you don't want to hear from Michael, you need to hear from the gospel writer who says sometimes you got to encourage yourself. Sometimes you got to be by yourself. And I to let somebody know that if you can't enjoy the company of yourself, you will allow lots in your life. Folk who offer companionship, but not partnership. But I hear God say, I've got to break you up from them. It's time to separate. Jesus. That's good preaching. And sometimes, just sometimes, sometimes, mercy. it may have to happen mercy. as a result of a conflict Jesus. or a controversy. Jesus. Which brings me to my next point. Mm. Every now and then, God will put you in a dilemma. Mm. God will allow a conflict mm. that you can't repair. Mm. And the only resolution mm -hmm. is dissolution. Yeah. The only answer to the problem right. is separation. Right. A divorce for a cause is irreconcilable differences. And so what do you do when you know it's over? What do you do um, when I'm not talking about you getting out of something because you're in your feelings? I'm talking about when, when God is speaking and saying that this thing is over. What do you do? Help us, help us. The one thing you got to do is you got to leave in a manner that will bring God glory. Yes. Because you're a Christian. Yes. You're the one to say you got, you got to do the right thing. And so how do you uh, lead in a manner that will bring God glory? How do you find the blessing in goodbye? As a matter of fact, how do you find the good in goodbye? Yeah. And so the text teaches us some things to do when it's over. Mm. And the first thing you have to do, huh, this ain't going to fit y'all right, but sometimes the, <laughs> you need to be a peacemaker. Yes. Yes. Verse 8, chapter 13 says, and Abram said unto Lot, let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herd men and your herd men, for we are brethren. It is not, uh, it is not the whole land before us. Separate yourself, I pray thee, from me. If thou will take the left hand, then I will take the right hand. And if thou depart to the right hand, I will go left. Mm. Sometimes you have to be the peacemaker. Yeah. Now catch this. Yes. Lot is the one with the problem. Right. Lot is the one that has the issue. Mm -hmm. But Lot didn't come to Abram. Mm -hmm. Abram went to Lot. Mm -hmm. Both of them knows that there's a problem. Mm -hmm. But somebody has to be the bigger person. Yes. Somebody has to be the one to initiate peace. Right. Somebody has to say, we've got to resolve this. Yeah. Somebody has to take the initiative in making it better. Uh -huh. I know you don't want to go tit for tat. I know you may want to get somebody back. Uh -huh. I know you may want to tell them off. I know you might just want to say something. But the Bible says, blessed are the peacemakers. Yes. For they shall be called the children of God. Yes. And I want to encourage the church this morning. That as a child of God, when you're in a situation and God is calling a thing to an end, you have to learn how to take the high road. Yes. First Lady Obama. First Lady Obama reminded of what she said. She said, uh, one of the things that made her and her family stronger when they were in the White House, she said, is when they go low, we go high. Yes. I listen, I know it's not easy. I know it's not fun taking the high road when somebody else is in the gutter. I know it's not easy doing it God's way when you're dealing with somebody who wants to do it by any means necessary. I know it's not easy walking and living according to the word when folk are hitting you with every 
the demonic force of hell and the world. But I want to encourage you to take the high road. Don't stoop down because the minute you take your hands off of it, you the minute you put, take, put your hands on it, brother, is the minute you force God's hand off of it. You got to let go and let God. Oh, yes, I wish I had a church who knows that you got to let God fight your battles. If you want God to fix it, if you want God to solve the problem, you have to stay in position, which is out of God's way. In other words, you stay high, let God go down there and deal with them. Is there anybody listening who knows that the Lord will fight your battle? That's why Paul said, love your enemies. Hallelujah. If they're hungry, give them something to eat. If they're thirsty, give them something to drink. By doing it, you reap heaps of coal on their head. In other words, you blow their mind. They'll be wondering why he's still talking to me. And he know I can't stand him. Why she's still smiling at me. And she know I don't like her. That's because you're doing it God's way. You have to be the peacemaker. Because folk will look at you, and you know why you gotta be the peacemaker? Uh -huh. Because oftentimes folk got an attitude with you, yeah. and they don't even know why they're mad at you. Yeah. They just don't like it because of something they heard, or uh, yeah. uh, because some somebody else said. Listen, a few years ago on my job, mm -hmm. um, I worked as a bailiff in 2003 and 2005. Uh, when when the judge I was um, serving was unsuccessful, the court. Uh, decided that um, they weren't going to let me go, but they would find another position for me within the court. And I'm so thankful and grateful today because of that decision, then I still am here today doing what I love to do. But, but when I first got to the department I was working in, folk used to look at me because, uh, you know, when my judge left, she blessed me with some gifts. Um, she gave me a nice picture of Muhammad Ali, and I had to have a place to hang the picture. She blessed me with a nice big chair. Everybody else was sitting in a chair, but I had a big leather chair, big back chair, and folk got to looking at me who he think he is, and, 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 and why, why he like that, and, and he think we go power to him, and, and all, and they had all this animosity built up toward me, but can I tell you, because I was a peacemaker, I didn't go tip the tap with them, I didn't get into it with them, I just um, uh, stayed the way I thought the Lord wanted me to be, and as a result, some of the same ones that hated on me, some of the same ones that didn't like me, are the very ones that called me up and say, can you pray for me? Uh, uh, can you come and see about me? I come out here to encourage the church, you got to be the peacemaker. But not only that, That's good. in order to leave a situation uh -huh. and bring God glory, uh, you can't be afraid of to have a difficult conversation. Mm -hmm. You can't be afraid of the difficult conversation. Mm -hmm. Again, Abram went to Lot to have a conversation. Uh -huh. Now watch this. He didn't get to have, he didn't go to have a confrontation. Right. He went to have a conversation. Yes. Let me say that again. Yes. Abram went to Lot and he didn't go to have a confrontation. Mm -hmm. He went to have a conversation. Uh -huh. But the problem arises. Let me tell you, there's nothing wrong with having conversation. Mm -hmm. It may be different, difficult. Mm -hmm. You may not want to do it. They may not want to hear it. Mm -hmm. But the conversation needs to happen. Uh -huh. yeah. But the problem arises in not what you say, uh -huh. but how you say it. Yes. And as a result, the conversation becomes a confrontation. Mm -hmm. And I submit that this happens oftentimes because folk either don't know how to have a meaningful conversation That's right. or they're afraid to have the conversation. Mm -hmm. So instead of initiating a conversation, they begin to have a confrontation. Yes. They start accusing folk. Yes. It's your fault. Uh -huh. They start hollering at folk, mm -hmm. raising their voice, start cussing. Mm -hmm. And this doesn't bring God glory. Yeah. And I want to 
to encourage somebody this morning, you got to learn how to communicate. Yeah. Don't be afraid of the difficult conversation. And I got to admit myself, I'm getting better with this myself. Yeah. My wife and, and my current boss and my former boss, those are some of the most direct yet respectful communicators that I know. They know how to just say, call a thing a thing. Right. They know how to put it out there. And let me tell you, they do it in love and in respect. And my brothers and my sisters, so many of us stay in ugly situations because we're afraid to have the difficult conversation. Well, and somebody's watching right now. Somebody is angry. Somebody is fed up. Uh -huh. Somebody is confused. Somebody is frustrated right now because you don't want to have a difficult conversation. You don't want to talk about something that's touchy. You don't want to talk about something that may upset somebody. You listen. You don't want to upset the apple cart. And so you're biting your lips and you're keeping silent in frustration. But I've grown enough to understand that it is better to have the difficult conversation than to suffer in silence. Well, say that. I'll say it again. It is better to have the difficult conversation than to suffer in silence. Stop skinning and grinning with folk and learn how to let them know, listen, what you're saying is a business. You don't have to be disrespectful about it. You can just let them know. You got to stop being silent. It's time to be courageous. It's time to speak truth. It's time to do it in love. Is there anybody here who knows that God has not given us the spirit of fear? We've got to stop being scared to express ourselves. And let me tell you this. If you can't express yourself, if you can't speak the truth, if you can't be open, up front, and honest, you need to take an inventory of the type of relationship that you're in. Yes. Because if you have to be fake, uh -huh. if you have to be phony, right. if you have to lie about how you feel, uh -huh. then you need to consider if the association is of God. Yes. Because let me tell you something. Avoidance is not deliverance. There are times when you're going to have to man up. There are times when you're going to have to face a thing head on. You're going to have to be real. You're going to have to deal with it. Why? You can't avoid it. Too many of us are trying to just allow something to just sit there and avoid it, but you got to learn how to deal with it. Because avoidance is not deliverance. And let me tell you something else. Bad news don't get good with time. Stop waiting to say and waiting to do what needs to be said and done. You need to do it right now. And the problem with many of us is we're slow to do away with situations that causes us pain. We're slow to do away with situations that causes us fear. We're scared to deal with anything that causes us uh, anxiety. But the Lord showed me this. Uh, I don't like needles. And so every time I have to go to the doctor and they have to give me a shot, uh -huh. I hate when they try and tell me uh, it's going to pinch. Uh, you're going to feel a little tingle. Uh, your arm is going to be a little sore. And, uh, and you, no, just stop talking about it. Go ahead and poke it because it's not going to change by delaying it. Amen. And so holding it out won't make it easier. Right. And it's not going to make it feel any better. So let's do it and get it out of the way because bad news don't get better over time. And then, watch this. I saw something else. Well, you can't own a thing until you call a thing a thing. Well, all right. Y'all oh, missed your chance to shout. I said, you can't own a thing mm -hmm. until you call a thing a thing. Right. If you can't and you won't identify the problem, yeah. you can't deal with it. Right. If you can't call a thing a thing, You'll never take authority over it. And all I'm trying to tell you is at some point, you've got to open your mouth. Up. You've got to say how you feel. You have to talk about what happened. You have to stop avoiding it. One of the reasons why reconciliation don't work is that many times we just come back together. We just want to say, oh, I forgive you, I love you. We don't want to talk about what caused the division. You've got to learn how to talk about that thing. Stop avoiding it. You can't be afraid of it. You've got to address it, and you've got to look it in the eye and deal with it. Is there anybody listening 
Uh, who knows you can't be afraid uh, to have the difficult conversation. Well, and so I know folks still not feeling me. They, they still not feeling me. So let, let, let me see if I can break this down and even, even the baby uh, can understand. Uh, we got our daughter a puppy last year for her birthday. Cute little Bichon breeds that we call Theodore. And Theo is just so cute. He's so cuddly. Monty just cuddles up with Theo. And my wife just plays with Theo. Him is just a baby. Him just all. Oh, listen, they just love Theo. But can I tell you, a dog is still a dog. Well, and so, 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 it took us some time. But we finally got Theo pad training, uh -huh. house training. Yeah. When we look at the show, we look at how cold it is. Feel like I'm glad that Theo don't have to go out there to take care of his business. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you the thing about pad training and versus taking him outside. You better change that pad as soon as possible, yeah, right. or you're going to have a stinking mess on your hand. And so the Lord showed me this yesterday. Imani had company and her friend was over there and they were down there. I could hear them playing and cackling up um, down in the basement. And, and my wife and I, we were sitting there in the room with Theo. He's trained. You know, he can roam around and play, but when he got to go to take care of his business, he knows to go to the crate and he needs to do it on his pad. Mm -hmm. And so yesterday, Theo did his business. And I looked at him, I saw him doing it. She looked at him, she saw him doing it. We looked at each other. I looked at her, she looked at me. She kept on looking on her phone. I kept on looking on, 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 on my phone. And I didn't move because I thought she was gonna get up and get it. And she didn't move because she thought I was gonna get up and get it. And the Lord showed me this. Here we are in a room and this mess is offending both of us. And we're trying to ignore it. We're trying to avoid it, but it's not going to go away. As a matter of fact, the longer it stays there, the smellier it's going to get. The longer it stays there, the dog is going to wallow all over in it, and he's going to get it all over the place. So I got up because I said to myself, somebody got to be the bigger person and take care of this mess. Is there anybody listening who knows that you got to deal with the mess? You have to come by and let somebody know you got to be mature enough. You got to be Christ-like enough to acknowledge that there's some mess in the room. There's something that's stinking in the room. And somebody's got to be big enough. Somebody's got to be man enough. Somebody's got to be woman enough to deal with it. And you can't be afraid and uh, try to avoid it because avoiders is Deliverance. All right. All right. Good. And so y'all put that feather in your cap. And so, yes, you got to be the peacemaker. Mm -hmm. We're talking about how to end the thing mm -hmm. and give God some glory. That's good. And then the last thing you need to do, how do you leave the situation and bring God glory mm -hmm. in your leaving? You got to know what victory is. Mm. You got to know what you really want out of the relationship. So many times in divorce court, um, you know, folks go there and they're more concerned about um, who's going, how much money somebody go get, who go get the house, who go get the um, dog, who go get the kids on what we get. Let me tell you something. You got to, to, to really be clear about what you really want mm -hmm. when the relationship is over. Mm -hmm. And so in the text, one of the things that made it easy for Abram and Lot to separate is Abram knew exactly what he wanted. And the problem with many of us is when it's over, they're not clear with what it is and what it really means to win. Hmm. What they're not acknowledging is oftentimes you may get hurt in the leaving process. Hmm. You may have to take a loss in the leaving process. Hmm. And so you have to assess what it is you really want when it's over. And I've come by here to tell you, you ought to want victory. Now, don't get me wrong, because oftentimes we fight for the wrong things. Mm. And some things are not worth fighting over. Mm. And if you're not clear about what it is you want, you keep battling and keep fighting with somebody because you haven't made it clear about what you wanted out of the disillusion. And so when I look at the text, Again, in verse 8 and 9, listen to it. Abram said unto Lot, 
Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, because we are brothers. Is not the whole, whole land before us? It's all right here for us. The blessing is right there in front of us. Separate yourself from me, I pray thee. If you will take what's on the left, then I'll take what's on the right. If you depart to the right, then I'll go to the left. Mm -hmm. <sighs> In other words, what Abram was saying to Lot is, I don't no longer care about the land. All you want is peace. Amen. And I don't know who I'm talking to, yes. but somebody's watching. And you're old enough to know that there's nothing like having peace. Yes. You know there's nothing more valuable than having peace. Yes. You know there's nothing more important than having peace. And you want peace. You're not concerned about things. You can have a good night's sleep even if you gotta sleep by yourself because yeah. you want peace. Yeah. You can be comfortable in the house even if you have to live by yourself because you want peace. You can, listen, you can have peace. The text says, that Abram says, you can take whatever you want. If you go to the left, I'm going to the right. If you go to the right, I'm going to the left. But all I want is peace. And then look at how the story ends. The Bible says, Lot chose the land. And the land that Lot chose became Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh-oh. Where the Bible readers at? <laughs> Y'all know what happened over in Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh -huh. But the land Abram chose was the promised land. Uh -huh. And the Bible says after they separate, God blessed Abram. As long as Lot was with Abram, God didn't tell him where he was going. Somebody missed their chance to shout. When you do it God's way, uh -huh. when you are the peacemaker, when you seek to give God glory, the Lord will deliver you to your blessed destiny. God said, I know the separation hurt you, but there's a blessing on the other side. I know it caused you some pain, but there's life and a blessing on the other side. I know it made you cry, but there's life and blessing on the other side. I know you had to suffer for a little while, but there's blessing and life on the other side. Is there anybody listening uh, that when you do it God's way, when you do what the Lord is calling you to do, uh -huh. you may have to go through some pain. You may have to go through some disappointment. Uh, but there's a life on the other side. Y'all well, still not good. Well, so let me put some Bible on there. The Bible said uh, Jesus uh, traveled across 42 generations and he came into the world uh, when he was despised he was misunderstood. He was doubted. He was despised. But the Bible said, Jesus said, I must be about my father's business. I must work the work of him who sent me. And so the Lord had to go through some things. The Bible said, he was beaten. He was whipped. He was mocked. They took him from judgment hall to judgment hall. They ultimately nailed him to a cross. They hung him high. 
stewardship. Well, why are we in that? Mm. And then the Lord showed me that <laughs> we hear the cliche, folk are in your life for reasons mm -hmm. and seasons. Mm -hmm. We say that. Uh -huh. but that's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. And so there may come a time if you're wondering why you're not blossoming. Now I can be wrong, but but I think I think one of the ways to help a plant to blossom and flourish, you have to pull the dead leaves off of it. Yes. Yeah. And I don't know who this is for. You got folk who are around you and all they're offering is companionship. And companionship is good. But when you're trying to fulfill your destiny, companionship, you ought to be with folk who will partner with you. And partner with you means you should be able to get love and support. And companionship, but partnership say I'm with you and we're going to do this thing. Companionship, I'm with you, and I want to see what you're going to do. Right. Partnership, I'm with you, and when the Lord blesses you, I'm going to celebrate you, because I realize me and my being connected to you, my blessing is on the way. Companionship, Lord, you're blessed. Why you bless them and you didn't bless me? Uh-huh. Now, partnership, Make it plain. huh? Lord, you've done a great work. If it had not been for you, I don't know where we would be. Companionship. Ooh, I sure was glad I went to school. I worked so hard. I did this, I did that. It's time to come out of companionship and get into partnership and find your godly purpose so that you can reach your godly destiny. Yes. And somebody here, or somebody may be watching, and you haven't found your purpose in life, and that's because you're not connected to the one who gives you purpose, and that's Jesus. And as I said to you last week, when your relationship with him is intact, your, your, your vertical connection is intact, your horizontal connection will be intact. You can interact with other folks right. when you can interact like that. Right. And so if you're watching and you haven't got that uh, vertical relationship, I want to give you an opportunity to accept Jesus as your best friend. Yes. Somebody say he's the best thing to ever happen. I know he is to me. And so I don't know who you are or where you are, but you can receive Jesus right here and right now by just praying this prayer. Lord, I am a sinner. But I believe Jesus, you died on the cross for my sin. I believe God raised you from the dead. I believe that all power is in your hands, in heaven and on earth. I invite you to my heart, Lord. Fill me with your spirit. Help me to be in right relationship with you that I might get along with others and I'll live the rest of my days for you in Jesus name Amen if you prayed that prayer find yourself a Bible preaching and a Bible teaching church where you can learn more about Jesus and learn about his will for your life we love to have you here at the United Missionary Baptist Church we're located at 9312 Union Avenue here in the city of Cleveland, Ohio 44105. Getting ready to leave. And as the officers take up the offering here in the sanctuary, so those of you who are watching online, if this ministry has been a blessing to you, or if you are a member of this ministry and you know you need to give your time and offering, you may do so by downloading the Give the Five app onto your mobile device. We are United Missionary Baptist Church. Cleveland, Ohio. To the members that continue to give, God bless you, and we thank you for your continued support of the ministry. To those who are not, not members, but you sow a seed because this ministry has been a blessing to you, thank you. We have received it, and we pray that the Lord will return it to you hundredfold. 
God bless you and may God keep you. We're getting ready to leave. And uh, uh, my prayer is that in this frigid temperatures and all this snow, that you are being safe and that you are being um, um, safe and you're doing what the Lord is calling you to do in this season of uh, pandemic and in this season of storm. Amen. But I just believe in my spirit, the storm is passing over. And so just keep on trusting in the Lord. Father, we thank you and we praise you for what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard. We thank you, O oh God, for your word, your written word and your preached word. Help us, O oh God, to apply the word to our hearts, to our minds, to our spirits, that we may be drawn closer to you. And now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding glory. To the wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Let us all say, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen. As you go, tell the world. Tell the world about Jesus. Tell the world.